In the maths cast entitled Powers of a 2x2 two two Matrix, we showed how powers a to the n for any 2x2 two two matrix could be written as a combination of the matrix itself and the identity matrix alpha a plus beta i. At the end of that maths cast, we looked at the specific matrix a equals 2, negative 2, negative 1, 3 and we used the theory that we'd learned to calculate a to the fourth using this method. At the end I made a very strong claim that we could use the method to find any power of the matrix A. It didn't have to be an integer power. Here I'm going to show you how you would find a square root of A. Actually it turns out there are four different square roots. Let's start by writing the square root as A to the half and if the theory is to work properly we expect that there is some alpha and beta such that a to the half can be written as a combination of a and i using the coefficients alpha and beta. We also know that the eigenvalues of a were 1 and 4 When we looked at a to the fourth, we commented that because of the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, the matrix A can be replaced with its eigenvalues in these results. So let's do this here. Let's replace the matrix A in the equation a to the half equals alpha A plus beta I with the two possible eigenvalues, 1 and 4. So we get 1 to the half is alpha times 1 plus beta. We replace the matrix I with just 1. And 4 to the half equals alpha times 4 plus beta. Now we must be careful. 1 to the half and 4 to the half both have two possible values. 1 to the half is plus or minus 1. 4 to the half is plus or minus 2. That's telling us that we have four different results to look at with each combination of these square roots. Let's start by using plus 1 and plus 2. Let's call this result 1. Then we have 1 equals alpha plus beta and 2 equals 4 alpha plus beta. If we subtract the first of these equations from the second, the betas will disappear and that will give us 3 alpha equals 1. In other words, alpha equals 1 third then substituting back into the first equation gives us that beta is two-thirds. So here is my first claim for a square root of a. a to the half should be one-third a plus two-thirds i. Let's work that out explicitly. That's one-third times the matrix A. Do you remember what that was? It was 2, negative 2, negative 1, 3 plus 2 thirds times 1, 0, 0, 1. If we do the arithmetic here, in the first position we will have 2 times a third plus another 2 times a third, that's 4 thirds, then negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third, and in the last position 3 times a third is 1, plus a further 2 thirds, that's 5 thirds. That should be a square root of A. Let's check it by squaring it. 4 thirds minus 2 thirds minus one-third, five-thirds. 
multiplied by four thirds minus two thirds minus one third five thirds equals first row first column everything's going to be in ninths of course so there'll be four times four is sixteen minus times minus is plus two ninths so eighteen over nine first row second column four times negative two is negative eight minus two times five is negative ten so minus eighteen ninths second row first column minus one times four minus one times five is minus nine over nine and lastly minus one times minus two is two five five to twenty five that's twenty seven over nine and I think you can see that that simplifies to 2, negative 2, negative 1, 3, which is certainly A. Our method has worked to give us a square root of A. Now, of course, that was only one choice. We used 1 and 2 for the square roots of the eigenvalues. We could have made another choice, negative 1 and negative 2. negative 2 for 1 to the half and 4 to the half then we get and it'll all look exactly the same except for some minus signs so in these equations here we will simply have negative 1 on the left and negative 2 on the left If you're astute, you'll realize that actually we're just going to get the same alpha and beta as before, except with negatives on them. So I'll leave you to solve those equations. We find that alpha equals now not one third, but negative a third. And beta will be negative two thirds. So now we have another square root, which is minus a third a minus two thirds i. And of course that is just the negative of the one we had before. So that will just be minus the matrix that we got before. Four thirds, negative two thirds, negative a third and five thirds. That shouldn't come as a surprise. If we have one square root, we can always put a negative on the front of it and get another. What is surprising is that there are now two further square roots. This time I'm going to take the half powers to be one of them positive and the other negative. So let's say one to the half and take one, but take four to the half as negative two. So this is the third case. So now we get some different equations. We get 1 equals alpha plus beta and negative 2 equals 4 alpha plus beta. Subtracting as before, we get 3 alpha equals negative 3. So alpha is negative 1 and that means that it follows beta is 2. So this should give us a completely new square root. a to the half equals minus 1a plus 2i, which is the negative of a, 2, negative 2, negative 1, 3, plus 2 times the identity. And that simplifies to minus 2 plus 2 is 0, 2, 1, and negative 3, 
add 2 is negative 1. Let's double check that. When we square it we should end up back with A. Here's the square. Doing the matrix multiplication we get 0 times 0 and 2 times 1. 0 times 2 and 2 times negative 1. 1 times 0 and negative 1 times 1. And 1 times 2 and negative 1 times negative 1, that's plus 1, so makes 3. Again, that has come to A. And of course the final choice, choice 4, will be the one where we take 1 to the half equals negative 1 and 4 to the half equals positive 2. And this will just give us the negative of the answer we just got. So negative 0, 2, 1, minus 1. A has 4 square roots and we were able to find them all by our Curly Hamilton method. Actually, I've covered something up here. It's rather subtle and we're not going to investigate it further. There are some matrices which are rather special. They have an infinite number of square roots. One example is the unit matrix. Consider the following. If I square the matrix given by A, 1 minus A squared over C, C negative A, you will find that that comes to 1, 0, 0, 1 for all values of A and C. The identity, 1, 0, 0, 1, is an example of one of those special matrices that has an infinite number of square roots. In fact, in a sense, it's doubly infinite. We have any choice we like for both A and C. It's not the only matrix with this property, but it is the most obvious. I'll just leave you to ponder that.